Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week asks you to prove um, Euler's formula here, which is e to the ix is equal to cosine of x plus i sine of x. Okay, so it's going to, well, there are many ways to do, there are many different ways to do this proof, but I'm going to approach it using um, Maclaurin series, which is Taylor series centered at zero. So in kind of a clever way. So first of all, we know that e to the z, so e to the z, the, just the definition of it, the Maclaurin expansion of e to the z is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of z to the n over n factorial, which in other words is equal to one plus c over one, fact, uh, one factorial plus c squared over two factorial plus z cubed over three factorial and so on and so forth. Whoops, plus. Okay. Okay, so we have the McLaurin expansion just for e to the z, but we need it to be e to the i x. So we're going to go ahead and plug in. So we let z, z be equal to i x here. So then we just substitute z in. Everywhere we see a z here, we plug in i x. So we get e to the i x is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of instead of z we have i x to the n over n factorial. So now we're going to go ahead and just kind of write write an expression like this, just as we did before. So we end up getting here instead of this we end up getting one plus i x plus uh, i x squared over uh, two factorial plus quantity i x cubed, whoops, i x cubed over three factorial and plus so on and so forth. So now we can go ahead and distribute the uh, exponents here inside. So we're going to get this as being equal to, I'm gonna go ahead and write out a few more terms here so I'll leave myself some more room. First two terms stay the same, so one plus i x plus i squared x squared all over two factorial. And I repeat the same thing for the next term, so plus i cubed x cubed over three factorial plus i to the fourth x to the fourth over uh, four factorial plus i to the fifth x to the fifth over five factorial and so on and so forth. And so we know that since i is equal to the square root of negative 1, uh, i squared is equal to negative 1. So everywhere we see an i squared, we can replace it with negative 1. So here this becomes, this expression becomes 1 plus i x. So i squared, so we see, we, we see i squared, so we immediately negate this. So we have minus x squared over 2 factorial plus, okay, so in case it's not immediately obvious, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite all of the i squared, or all the i terms here in terms of, i squared, which is sometimes easier. It's kind of what I like to do usually. So in terms of, so i cubed is equal to i squared times i uh, time, uh, times x cubed all over 3 factorial plus i squared uh, squared times x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus, uh, keep writing x, uh, i i squared times i squared squared times i times x to the fifth over five factorial plus so on and so forth over there. So now it should be hopefully a little bit more clear uh, as to what we're going to get or where, where we're going to get a negative and where we're going to get a positive. This, so this ends up being equal to one plus ix, the first two terms just staying the same, minus x squared over two factorial. So plus i squared i, so i squared is negative, so minus i, so we still have an i term there, times x cubed over 3 factorial. So now we have an i squared, so i squared is negative 1, squared is 1, so this becomes positive, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, so i squared squared, again positive, and then we still have an i term left over. So plus i times x to the fifth over 5 factorial, 
and so on and so forth. So now we're going to group together like terms and see if we can come up with an expression that looks a little bit more familiar. Okay. So down here, we're going to group, I'm going to group together all of the terms that have an I, and I'm going to group together all the terms that don't have an I. So we have a 1, and so this one has an I, so we're going to leave it out. So 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial. This one has an I, so I'm going to skip it. Uh, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, uh, and so on and so forth. Plus, so now I'm going to have all the I terms, so Ix, so plus Ix minus Ix cubed over 3 factorial. And the next I term is plus I to the fifth over 5 factorial. Ix to the fifth, excuse me, plus Ix to the fifth over 5 factorial, and so on and so forth over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the I. So this is equal to 1, just copying down the same terms from the beginning here. 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus so on and so forth plus i. So I'm just factoring out the i from all the terms that have an i. Plus, uh, so we have here x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus uh, so on and so forth over there. So now if you recall, uh, the Maclaurin expansion, we've pretty much finished. If, we, if you notice here that this is the Maclaurin expansion for cosine, this is the Maclaurin expansion for sine. Um, so just writing this down here. So cosine, so cosine of x is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1, negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n over 2n factorial, which is equal to just what we have over here, which is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, and so on and so forth. And we also have the, uh, the excuse me, the McLaurin expansion for sine of x. So sine of x is equal to the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the quantity 2n plus 1, all over quantity 2n plus 1 factorial, which is equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, and so on and so forth. So as we can see here, this expression becomes exactly then, this, this expression becomes exactly cosine of x minus, uh, or excuse me, plus, we have plus here, plus i, i, which we factored out here, so plus i times what inside here is just the McLaurin expansion for sine of x, so plus i times sine of x. Okay, just kind of delineating this here. So this is, in fact, our answer here. So it looks like we're all good to go. We've used McLaurin expansions to prove, starting from e to the z, plugging in z is equal to ix, and then kind of doing some modification and simplification by combining like terms or, you know, yeah, combining like terms and grouping them together and being able to factor out the i terms. So it becomes easier to see here that what we have essentially when we, we, we plug in ix instead of z for the McLaurin expansion of e to the x, we end up getting, or e to the z, we end up getting actually the McLaurin expansions for cosine of x plus i sine of x. So that is one proof kind of a handy proof. It all kind of comes together in the end for um, Euler's formula there. Uh, there are many others, so if you have any other interesting ideas, just let us know in the comments of this video. Um, so to see more of these problems of the week, you can see our playlist here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click this link here. And to visit us at centerofmath.org, click this link here. Thank you for watching.